Hi everyone, we're back at Quilt Market at Houston and this is Susan who we have been selling her products for a number of times and she number of years and we have a new product which is now going to demonstrate for you. So take it away Susan. Alright, I'm really proud to show you the Dynamic Dresden's book and Dynamic Dresden's rulers. So every project in the book is written in both 18 and 30 degrees like these rulers are. The more intricate designs, people who like those are going to want the 18 degree ruler. Those who want the bigger, more bold, more modern designs are going to want the 30 degree ruler. RNK is producing these rulers and I've self-published the book. All of these designs are in both 18 and 30 degrees in the book. I had 14 testers testing the instructions so I know that the instructions are clear. So let's start with, let's see, some features of these rulers. The lines are thin and that makes for better accuracy. The one inch increments are here and the half inch on the other side. So that eliminates errors so that you don't misread the line and that saves a lot of time. So we use the rulers to cut the wedges and then we take the wedges, fold right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam. Now it's time to make that pointed end. So I take my prairie pointer tool it comes in a package that looks like this. It's made for making prairie points, but it's also very good at this job. So I take my prairie pointer tool, put it into that, and then what I want to do is finger press this seam open. I use this little clover curved awl to come in there because my fingers are fat. And then you see this little triangle at the top is not our friend. We want that flattened. So I take the handle and I flatten that down. We don't want that wadded up in the point of our wedge. So then I will turn this right side out. And then I don't want to put something sharp in there because I'll poke a hole in the end. I don't want to put something not sharp because then I won't get a nice point. So again, I take the prairie pointer tool and I'm pointing it downward. So I'm gonna scoop it underneath that little flap of a triangle that I showed you earlier. And I'm gonna make sure that the seam is in line with that center line on the tool. And then I will put my iron on it and slide the tool right out. Then I'll let my iron do the job there while I start working on another one. Okay, now after I've done that point, I do the same exact thing to the other end. And that way, I don't need an applique center. So if you look at this ring, you'll see I don't have an applique center. The inside edge of that ring is finished off with points just like the outside of the ring. And I think that opens up a whole bunch of wonderful design opportunities. Now, the next typical problem with Dresden's is that when we sew a bunch of wedges together, they never lay flat and make a nice flat unit. So I like to do a sew and flip technique. This is starched, light colored fabric, nothing that's hard to find. And then X is where we begin. The edge of the wedge goes to the line. And then the next wedge is right side down and it's aligned with that line, sew the quarter inch and flip, and it should hit the next line. If it doesn't, we adjust that seam allowance. If it's off just a little bit, then we align the new edge with that line. So there's a correction that's made every time a new wedge goes on. And then as we work our way on around the ring, it's going to lay nice and flat because of the foundation. A bonus with the foundation is that these Dresdens are now lined on the back so that when I take this Dresden ring and I, if I have light colored fabrics and I lay it on a dark background, the background isn't going to show through. And so that, that's another wonderful, that's just an added bonus with the, with the foundation. So after I have made the ring, then I do something else that's kind of different. Let me pull this in here. I quilt the quilt 
before I add the Dresdens because quilting a quilt is easier when there are no, uh, no obstacles. Then I take my Dresden wedges, my ring, and I lay it down there and I stitch in the ditch. I stitch this to the quilted quilt, but I don't start and stop and start and stop. What I do is I stitch that ditch and then I'll pull this up and I'll go underneath there and I'll stitch that ditch and I'll pull this up, go underneath there and stitch that ditch. And that way I, for each Dresden unit, I have only one start and one stop. And then yet another thing I do differently is out at the edge of this little quilt. I have taken and where the Dresdens fall off the edge, I've wrapped it to the back and just hand stitched those to the back. And this is just a little more of a contemporary edge to this quilt. So those are just some of the really new ideas I have about working with Dresdens. And I hope everybody gives it a try because the possibilities are just endless and it's great fun to be accurate and come up with these new ideas. Thank you very much, Susan. Susan Cleveland, you are a star. <laughs> Thank you.